Welcome to EPG Parsala on the subject Social Medicine and Community Health. I am Dr. C. P. Bhushra, working as Professor in the Department of Community Medicine, Institute of Medical Sciences at Manas Indian University. I shall be discussing the module Non-Communicable Diseases Part 1, which belongs to the paper National Health Policies and Programs. This is a contribution from a team comprising of myself, Dr. D. K. Teresa, Dr. Kurana and Dr. Bhakti Banerjee. The learning objectives that has been set for this session is number one, after going through this session, one should be able to describe the problems of non communicable diseases. Number two, after going through this session, this is to, one should be able to describe the objectives and strategies of national program on non communicable diseases regarding diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and Non-communicable diseases are a group of conditions that includes cardiovascular diseases, cancer, mental health problems, diabetes mellitus, chronic respiratory diseases, and muscular skeletal conditions. These conditions cause about 86% of the deaths and 77% of the disease burden. These diseases are largely preventable and are linked by a common risk factors, underlying determinants, and opportunities for intervention. This is the statement given by WHO Global Report on Non Communicable Disease 2010. Now, if you look at the various characteristics of non communicable diseases, they are different from the communicable diseases. The characteristics of non communicable diseases are indefinite onset, long latent period, absence of known agent many times and they are multifactorial in causation. The classical triad of uh, agent, host and environment may not be always applicable in case of non-communicable diseases. Absence of known agent creates lot of difficulties. Causative agent not known in many diseases, hence diagnosis and prevention becomes difficult. There is a long latent period, presence of a long incubation period or latent period period between exposure to the causative agent and development of disease. Hence, correlation of agent with disease is difficult. So, this disease, group of diseases, which comprises non communicable diseases, are multifactorial in causation. It means that many factors are involved in them. And the effect of one factor with another factor is generally multiplicative in nature. So, multiple factors are involved. No single one to one cause relationship exists. This factors define probability of the disease. And the cumulative effect of multiple risk factors results in non communicable disease. Risk factors could be environmental, could be behavioral, like smoking, and NCDs mostly they are slow in onset and development. They take time. Diseases is still risk before the symptoms appear. And that's the major problem. So, therefore, this, uh, uh, the distinction between healthy and diseased persons are also difficult. And unless the disease is advanced, unless complications set in, the, the apparent uh, diagnosis becomes difficult. When patient seeks medical advice, he has already had a reversal diagnosis many, many times. So, the late reporting becomes a very important cause of indifferent onset. There are several risk factors. Could be diabetes, uh, smoking, inactivity, genetic factors, physical activity, less uh, obesity, and high blood pressure. And so there are so many factors that are related to me. And these are generally related to our lifestyle and eating habits. Now, coming to the risk factors, they are non modifiable, like age, gender. Family history, genetic factors, personality. There are two types of personality personality A personality and B personality. And A personality people are very aggressive. There are modifiable risk factors of non communicable disease like cigarette smoking, alcohol abuse, dyslipidemia, sedentary lifestyle, stress, environmental risk, inability to avail preventive health care services. So these modifiable factors, uh, 
the serve as the basis to start preventive measures. Uh, the implications of non communicable diseases are enormous. Premature death is one of the important cause, consequence, and concern or concern. Disabilities, NCDs lead to many disabilities and loss of productivity. Cost of treatment and care is enormous because the disease, these diseases continue to almost throughout life. Now, in understanding non communicable diseases, generally we follow life course approach. That is, uh, we calculate cumulative life course risk factors for non communicable diseases and cumulative risks. Highlighting the influence of sex and gender related factors. Say, for example, during fetal life, maternal nutrition plays a very significant role. During early childhood, birth weight, growth rate, social and economic status influences risk to NCDs, particularly childhood obesity is emerging a very serious problem. During adolescence, obesity and other Behavioral risk factors like physical inactivity, smoking, and particularly obesity and consumption of fast food habits that uh, becomes very important risk uh, conditions. Adult life, most of the habits that are formed during adolescence are taken during the adult period. Establish adult behavioral risk factors in terms of Smoking, tobacco consumption in any form, alcohol intake, physical inactivity, and so on. These factors contribute enormously to the causation of non communicable disease. There are sex related factors, and that may be responsible for this. Now, in the life course approach, this is an established approach in epidemiology. A life course approach is being used to study the physical and social hazards. During gestation, childhood, adolescence, young adulthood, and middle midlife, that affect chronic diseases, risk, and health outcomes in the whole life. So, life cycle or life course approach is getting very popular, important popularity uh, in the understanding the course of a disease that is being followed on natural state of the being. Germs to identify the underlying biological, behavioral, and psycho social processes that operate across the life span. Many unhealthy behaviors like smoking, alcoholism, consumption of fast foods, incidental life and so on are uh, that underlying NCDs start during childhood and adolescence. They include the main modifiable non-communicable disease risk factors, physical inactivity, tobacco use, Second hand smoke exposure, unhealthy diets, particularly consumption of fast foods, and the harmful use of alcohol are strongly linked to morbidity, mortality, and disability in the short and longer terms. Conceptual model in the life course epidemiology uh, uh, states that there are two approaches, two models, particularly critical period model with or without later life risk factors. With later life effect modifiers. And the second model is accumulation of risk. This uh, with the independent and uncoordinated results with coordinated results. So these are the conceptual models and risk clustering. That is, uh, if there are more than one risk in a particular person, chances of uh, adverse effects removed. Then last chain of chains of risk and additive or trigger effects of many. Now, having discussed the basic concepts related to non communicable diseases, we would like to have a look at total non communicable deaths by WHO regions. Then we have African region, we have regions of America, South Asia region, European region, Eastern Mediterranean region, and Western Pacific region. These are the six regions of WHO. And looking at this graph, it is very clear. That Western Pacific region has the highest number of deaths, and Southeast Asia region is also deaths are very quite common. 
Now, Delhi's disability adjusted life years by broadcast groups 1990 to 2020 in developing countries. Baseline scenario. If we compare the figure of 1990 and 2020, communicable diseases are declining, injuries are on rise, neuropsychiatric conditions are on rise, and non communicable diseases have. Professionally high during this period. So, with the passage of time, what we are observing that non communicable diseases are rising globally. So, in low and middle income countries suffer the greatest impact of non communicable diseases. Earlier, non communicable diseases were confined to developed countries. But the present scenario clearly emphasizes that 77% of the total number of deaths attributed to two non communicable diseases are occurring in developing countries. And 85% of the global non communicable disease burden are borne by low and middle income countries, whereas health systems is not very conducive and they are in a difficult position to bear the cost of it. Cardiovascular disease epidemic. In countries of different states of development, particularly high income countries, income countries in the transition and middle and low income countries, the disease spectrum has varied with the cases of right from 1950s onwards. In the high income countries, there was a rapid increase, they reached the peak in the 70s and then progressive decline. Remains as the first cause of death. NCD remains. In the economics in transition, Initially, there was a rapid increase, reached the peak almost in 1790s, progressive decline and remains as the first cause of death and disability. In middle and low income countries, low rates, slow rate, rapid increase in most of the countries took place in the latter part of uh, 1980s and onwards. And now it remains the first cause of death and disability in the most of the countries. So, according to different regions of the country from 1940 onwards and 2000, if you look at that, then in middle and low income countries, the rapid growth was delayed. Now, if you look at the, in, in the proportional mortality of total deaths, all ages, both sexes, non communicable diseases, 25 to 140, communicable, maternal, perinatal, and intermediate conditions contribute about 28% of the total. Mortality. Other NCDs, 12%. Injuries, 12%. Cardiovascular disease, 26%. Diabetes, 3%. Respiratory disease, 7%. And remaining disease are caused by cancer. So, uh, we can see here that if you have to address the non communicable diseases, many important conditions like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, risks, uh, cancer, these are common conditions which can be taken care of by adopting multi sectoral and multi pronged approaches, including giving emphasis, due process, and primary prevention. Now, let us realize that since non communicable diseases are right in India, in fact, India is facing triple burden of non communicable diseases are on right, communicable diseases are prevailing. Third group of diseases that is behavioral diseases or mental diseases are also. We have to understand the national system's response to non communicable diseases. And this can be assessed on the basis of several indicators. Has our country has an operational NCD unit, branch or department within the Ministry of Health and equivalent? Yes. Has an operational multi national policy? Yes, strategy. Strategy and action plan that integrates several NCDs and say addresses of factors. No. As an operational policy, strategy and action plan to reduce the harm to use of alcohol. In India, we have yes. Has an operational policy, strategy and action plan to reduce physical activity and or promote physical activity. Yes. Has an operational policy, strategy and action plan to reduce the burden of tobacco use. Yes. Has an operational policy, strategy and action plan to reduce unhealthy diet or promote healthy. Works, yes, has evidence based national guidelines, protocols, standards for management of NCDs through a primary care approach. No, 
as an NC distribution and monitoring system based to enable reporting based on nine global NCDs targets. So, if NCD surveillance has been included in the integrated disease surveillance project at the national level, a holistic approach is still needed. As a national population based cancer registry, we have some registry, but we are not representative of the entire country. Now, global NCD targets. We have to remember that by a number, a number of global targets have been set that needs to be, these tar goals have been set for the year 2025. That is 2025. We want to come to premature mortality should be reduced by 25%, tobacco use reduction 30%. Harmful use of alcohol by 10%, physical electricity reduction by 10%, salt or sodium intake reduction by 30%, obesity, diabetes, zero increase means contained and should be non-stationary. Then 80% availability of essential medicines and basic technologies to treat cardiovascular diseases and so on, and 50% of eligible people must get adequate medicines. So these are the targets that have been set globally. And India is also committed, India has a large phone framework. Global non-communicable digestion plan has set several objectives. The first objective is to raise the priority according to the prevention and control of NCDs in global, regional and national agendas and internationally agreed developmental goals to strengthen international cooperation and advocacy. The second objective is to strengthen national capacity, leadership, governance, multi-sectoral action, partnerships to accelerate countries' response for the prevention and control of NCDs. The third, to reduce modifiable risk factors like alcohol consumption, tobacco smoking, fast food consumption, and so on, physical electricity. Modifiable risk factors for NCDs are underlying social determinants to creation of health promoting environments. National program for prevention and control of cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases are stored, popularly known as the NPCDs CS is in, has been initiated. And global programs are as a commitment to the global public disease control strategies. The program of, has set a number of objectives. The first objective is to prevent and control common NCDs through behavioral and lifestyle changes. It means the exercises and primordial prevention. To provide early diagnosis and management of common non communicable diseases. Then Third, capacity building at different levels of healthcare for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of common non communicable diseases. Fourth, to train human resources within the public health setup, doctors, paramedics, and nursing staff to cope with the increasing burden of NCD. This is important because we have in our country a huge infrastructure, uh, a network of Primary health centers, sub centers, community health centers, district hospitals, and tertiary hospitals. And all human resources must be apprised about the importance of NCDs and how we can tackle the problem of NCDs, adopting primary, secondary, and tertiary preventive approaches. To establish and develop capacity about palliative and rehabilitative care because we know that in spite of our best efforts, there will be some problems and to require rehabilitative services. The National Program for Control of Diabetes, Cancer and Stroke Program has two important components. The first component is diabetes, cardiovascular diseases and stroke. The second is cancer. This program has evolved several strategies. One is prevention through behavioral change. So BCC, educational program, behavioral change communication strategies, emphasizing on life 
lifestyle modification yeah, should be the inbuilt component of this. Second is mechanism should be evolved for early diagnosis and treatment because if these conditions are treated early, then evidence will be better. Capacity building for of human source and also other infrastructural support and in terms of drugs and supplies, then surveillance, monitoring and evaluation has to be included in components so that we should be able to understand that we are going the right path and we can take secondary or corrections. Risk factors and levels of NCD prevention and management. At the level of secondary prevention, we talk of only diagnosis and case management. Primary prevention, we emphasize on health promotion and that is on behavioral risk factors. Behavioral risk factors are related to tobacco consumption, alcohol consumption, physical inactivity, diet, particularly consumption of fast foods, and so on. Then, a number of physiological risk factors are there like BMI, blood glucose, blood pressure, cholesterol, and they, they come at an intermediate level and they add. Primary level and secondary level both, we can institute early diagnosis and case management approach. The disease outcomes, the cumulative effect of behavioral risk factors and physiological risk factors ultimately leads to heart disease, stroke, diabetes, cancers, and chronic respiratory disease. At the tertiary care, case management and regulatory activities has to be initiated for these conditions. Providing preventive, promoting, curative, and supportive care, core and integrated services in the area of cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and stroke is the main action or activity in the program. Range of services include health promotion. Psychosocial counseling, management out and inpatient both, daycare services, home based care and palliative care for those who are disabled, referral for specialized services as needed to the higher centers. District hospital linked to private laboratories and NGOs will help to provide the additional component of continuum of care and support for outreach services. We have in our country the health infrastructure and the Periphery, we have some sector which takes care of 5,000 to 3,000 population according to the whether it is the trade area or in the hilly and travel area. At the subcenter level, the basic activities will be health promotion for behavioral change, opportunistic screening using blood test instrument and blood glucose by strip method, and referral of suspect cases to promoting health center and PSCs. At the primary health center and promoting health centers, will be, the services will be prevention and health promotion including counseling, early diagnosis through clinical and laboratory investigations, common laboratory investigations that will be performed at community centers will be blood sugar level, lipid profile, ECG, ultrasound, X-rays and so on. Then management of common cardiovascular diseases, diabetes and stroke cases on the OPD and indoor patient basis, home based care for bedridden chronic cases. Referral of difficult cases to district hospital or healthcare facility. Package of services to be made available at different levels of under the national program for control of diabetes, cancer, and stroke. At the, at the level of district hospital, it will include early diagnosis of diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, stroke, and cancer. Investigations like blood sugar, lipid profile, kidney function test, liver function test. ECG, ultrasound, X-ray, pulposcopy, mammography, if not available to be outsourced. Referral of difficult cases to higher healthcare facility, health promotion for behavioral change, medical management of cases, outpatient, inpatient, and intensive care, follow up and care of bedridden cases, and day care facility. At the tertiary care institutions and centers, comprehensive cancer care, including prevention, early detection, diagnosis, treatment, minimal access surgery after care, palliative care and liver and so on will be 
be sure. Present situation, national program has been for non-communicable diseases has been implemented in 35 states, even territories from 2013 and 2014. 21 states have functional MCD cells, 95 districts have functional MCD clinics, and 2004 commercial center clinics are uh, in functional in seven states. 29,000 glucometers, 5.8 core glucose strips, and 6.67 core lancets have been supplied to 21 states for diabetes screening under the program. Urban health checkups for cities and pilot phase of school health program in four districts are. As on 31st March 2014, as per the data received from the states, total 5539571 persons have been screened for diabetes, hypertension, under various health check facilities, schools, workplace, and urban service. If you look at the utilization pattern of various services in the public and private sector, it has been observed that most of the patients are going to the private sector for outdoor care. It means that if non-communicable diseases are rife, and if you want that the public sector be utilized efficiently for non-communicable diseases, then the minimum set of services has to be provided at different levels of care. India has a very impressive health infrastructure. We have a network of sub-center for 5,000 population in main area and 3,000 population in hilly and tribal and difficult areas. Then we have PSCs at 30,000 population. We have community centers at the block level. And then this hospitals at secondary level of health care and there are trusty care hospitals in terms of medical college, school facility hospitals at different places in the country. So sub-center becomes the peripheral most outreach service center in the public sector. And considering the its major role in prevention of communicable diseases at earlier stages. But also in this sense that most of the people in services are close to the people. So it was identified that for non communicable diseases also, a number of activities can be undertaken by these subcenters. The first and foremost importance that a subcenter should provide on health promotion for behavioral change for reduction of behavioral risk factors in terms of low smoking, low alcohol consumption, promoting physical activity, saying no to fast foods, in particularly in Indian fast foods like samosa and other things are also very important, and consumption of promoting healthy diets, five servings of fruits and vegetables. So, the, because by mo promoting behavioral change in the areas of consumption of alcohol, smoking, and healthy dietary practices, we can reduce many cases of non communicable diseases. The second approach is an activity that has to be performed by a substantial opportunistic screening program. Those who are coming for other conditions also, they should be screened for hypertension. By their blood pressure should be recorded, and also blood glucose by strict method should be identified. People need to be educated about cancer also, and particularly the warning signals of cancer in terms of and once substance can be the first contact with the community and once there is a suspect case they should be referred to primary health centers and community health centers. The community health center has a very pivotal role in prevention and health promotion, including counseling, 
so that people can adopt healthy lifestyle and non-communicable diseases related to them can be prevented. Community health center help provide necessary inputs in terms of clinical and laboratory support so that early diagnosis of non-communicable diseases are made. If the cases of hypertension, diabetes, cancer are detected early and remedial measures are instituted early, then their consequences will be minimized. The in a number of uh, common laboratory investigations and has to be performed at the community and central level, like blood group, sugar, lipid profile, ECG, ultrasound, and X-ray facilities, so that people can be detected. Once the cases are detected, there should be efficient and adequate provisions for management of common cardiovascular diseases and diabetes in those two cases. Most of both on the way are outpatient cases and in, inpatient cases. There are certain many people, community health centers have a community based responsibility, and therefore, extension of home based care for better and poor cases is desired. If uh, cases beyond the cap capacity of managing a community health center must be referred to the uh, district hospital or higher health care facility. Now, district uh, hospitals is a unit in the district which is supposed to provide all types of care within all types of care within the district and whatever cases are coming from referral places from CSCs, ESCs, they must be taken care of. So therefore, each and every district hospital should be equipped with diagnostic facilities for diabetes cardiovascular diseases, stroke and cancer. And a number of investigative facilities are needed like blood sugar, lipid profile, kidney function tests in terms of urea and fertilized patient, liver function tests, ECT, ultrasound, X-ray colposcopy, neurography, and so on. If some of the facilities are not available, they should be outsourced. Refer of difficulties to higher healthcare facilities is desired. Health promotion for behavioral changes should be an inbuilt component in the management of cases. Medical management of cases at the outpatient, inpatient, and intensive care units is desired and follow up and build bedroom cases and daycare facilities. These are these services that have to be provided by district hospital. District care centers must be provide comprehensive care. For many uh, diseases, but comprehensive cancer care, including prevention, early diagnosis, treatment, minimal access surgery, aftercare, palliative care, and rehabilitation. So it becomes very, very vital, but particularly surgical oncology, those are being debated this far. India's commitment for prevention of national communicable disease control program has been commendable. Strategies and policies have been evolved, and this program part also of the NCDs being implemented in 35 states and in Italy from 2013 onwards. A number of four activities have been initiated. 21 states have functional non NCD cells, 95 districts have functional NCD clinics. And 24 CSCs clinics are functional in seven states. A number of activities have been undertaken in this regard 29,000 glucometers, 5.8 crores glucose strips, and 6.67 crore lenses have been supplied to 21 states for diabetes screening under the program. Urban health checkups have been carried out in four cities, and pilot phase of school health program has been initiated in four districts. As on March 2014, as per the data received from states, many persons have been screened for diabetes and hypertension in the various health facilities in schools, workplace, urban slums. So schools are the principal area 
unit where we can start many behavioral changes programs because the habits that are picked up during adolescence and school days are taken up in the adult too. And therefore it becomes very important to start some promotional activities in schools. Now coming to the overall view as we have discussed just now, it has to be realized that communicable diseases are still prevailing in our country, but on the other hand, we are also facing serious problems of non communicable diseases. Globally, 86% of the deaths and 77% of the disease were there due to non communicable diseases. There are distinct differences between the epidemiology of communicable diseases and non communicable diseases. In the communicable diseases, we know the agent, we know the environment, and the other things. But in non communicable diseases, the classical agent host and environment model is not applicable. We have to have the causation model is built around multiple causes or wave of causes, and so that many factors are interact. And they have a multiplicative effect too. And therefore, control of non communicable diseases or prevention of non communicable diseases becomes difficult because we have to control many factors. Second thing is that even the presentation of cases are not as clear cut as for communicable diseases. In non communicable diseases, when patient comes, particularly in the advanced stage, and many times when a basic say, particular health facility, the disease is already set in, and that too, many times of a reversal nature. Another distinct different difference is that communicable diseases are of very short duration, but whereas most of the non communicable diseases they require huge investment on the part of family, on the part of the government, and many other systems, because these diseases are all carried out throughout life. They require intensive care throughout life. But we have to pay a lot of attention. Because they are the causes of mortality. And even those who survive, many times they have disability. The field of care is enormous. And therefore, we have to ensure that we must be able to prevent most of the non communicable diseases. And even if they have got this detected early, the remedial measures should be taken care of. The risk factors of most of the non communicable diseases are almost have a common mode of, of operation and they are common like smoking, alcohol consumption, physical inactivity, unhealthy diets. We have to promote a healthy lifestyle, no smoking, no alcoholism, phys enhanced physical activity, particularly 30 minutes daily walk, brisk walk and promoting at least five servings of fruits and vegetables in a day. These lifestyle modifications will make a difference. Then uh, we have to evolve a system's capacity. India has many problems, challenges in the field of health, but we can, cannot shrink our responsibilities in the, from the area of non communicable diseases. Because they are contributing significantly to mortality, mortality is our condition. So, so natural systems response for this, although in terms of concepts we agree with that. Any public health program has three stages: conceptual stage, operational stage, and practice stage. As far as the non-communicable disease are concerned. In the concepts, we agree, and that this is an important problem in our country. It can be prevented, measures can be instituted. However, at the operational level, there are many other aspects or problems that has to be resolved so that efficient mechanisms for early diagnosis, early treatment, behavioral changes, and other preventative services can be instituted. Thank you very much for visiting the video.